next on F4 US Championship Today. After two racing weekends in Central Ohio Farm Country, the Young Guns and veterans battling for the first F4 title ever reconvened near the Jersey Shore. Those first two weekends saw youngsters rise to the top, but now it's the midway stop on the title trail. Did someone new hit the Jersey jackpot? Find out on F4 US Championship Today, next. Hello and welcome to F4 U.S. Championship Today. I'm Rick Benjamin. We're at New Jersey Motorsports Park on the southern tip of New Jersey. Beautiful summer weekend of racing. Third weekend of racing in this brand new F4 United States Championship Series. Three rounds of action. We'll have all the highlights for you coming up. But first, let's show you what these race cars are all about. These cars are powered by a spec four-cylinder Honda engine, making 160 horsepower out of Honda Performance Development. They ride on Pirelli tires. This weekend, the weather's good, so they'll be slicks. The cars weigh 1,400 pounds with driver, and this, of course, is a series designed to elevate young drivers to the top levels of the sport. It's been a great season of competition so far, the inaugural F4 U.S. Championship campaign. Let's take a look back at the most recent weekend of racing. The drivers fighting for the F4 U.S. Championship gathered again at Mid-Ohio in August, second weekend of racing this year. Two rounds Friday, now 16 cars strong. Jackie Ding joining in along with Skylar Robinson. Big story though in race one was the weather, a wet race for the first time, SCCA making the call for rain tires. With so many young drivers, the wet conditions forced a long yellow flag period. Once the green appeared, it was Kyle Kirkwood in the Primus Racing 5 who scored his first career win. Race two that afternoon with much better weather. Bad luck though for Conrad Chachik from Poland by way of Florida. His car damaged earlier. Leading edge couldn't make the repairs, so the driver who swept the season's first three rounds was sidelined. This race was quite intense though. It was decided on the last lap when first timer Jackie Ding, who was leading, opened the door for his fellow rookie Robinson, who cashed in for the victory. Sunday's finale and 16-year-old Cameron Das showing plenty of form here. Das on pole off his fastest lap Friday. He took off and was never headed wire to wire for the win. Behind him, wild action in the keyhole. Drivers trying to go four wide. Benjamin Peterson was on the outside looking in. The contact sent him up but not over. Everyone okay, but Peterson's day was done. So a very tight points chase for the first F4 United States Championship. Three young drivers separated by just 26 markers after two weekends of action. We talked earlier to those three drivers as they get set to battle here in New Jersey. So Kyle, you've been the man to beat here this year. Tell us what has been the secret of your success. Well, there hasn't been any true secrets. We had one test day before we came into these events and nothing else in between mid-Ohio and now. So we've kind of ran the car stock, minor changes, and luckily we've been able to keep in the front with the changes that we made. Definitely focus on points. That's what we're going to be going into every weekend looking at. Uh, that's going to be our main goal because uh, although wins are definitely what we always go out and aim for when we're on the track, uh, the championship is won by points. And so uh, that's what we're going to be aiming for every time we go out on the track again. Well, I think I just need to run consistently. I, I don't need to do any moves that are unnecessary to, to get one or two positions. I just need to stay consistent and make sure I get points. The, the goal is not to push myself too hard, and I just need to, to build up as many points as possible. I mean, if he's 20 points ahead, that's okay. I can make that up in a weekend. All right, it's time to go racing here at New Jersey Motorsports Park. Let's set the stage for race number one on this weekend. Kyle Kirkwood starts six, his worst start this season. Kyle, what happened in that qualifying session? Well, I mean, we're a bit behind on setup. We haven't had that much time to do any testing, so we were really a little bit lost on setup. Um, we made a change middle of qualifying, trying to gain a little bit of time because I was about six tenths off in the beginning of qualifying. We made the change, and after that, the track just got greasier and greasier, so we couldn't really feel the setup change that that well. Um, so, I mean, we're starting six now, so hopefully I can make it through in the next 30 minutes. Weekend's first F4 battle in New Jersey saw first lap fireworks. Jackie Ding from Shenzhen, China, driving the Group A Racing 86 car, got a great start. He was running out front through the first section of racetrack, but Ding got loose at a left-hander and spun his machine. Skylar Robinson in the two car, and first weekend dominator Conrad Chachik in the 47 from Bleeding Edge, along with pole winner Cameron Das in the JDX Racing 28, all had to take evasive action. All of that opened the door for one of the Series 2 veterans, Jim Goffrey Jr. from Florida, who dove inside in his Primus Racing 11 car and grabbed the lead. 
His young teammate Kyle Kirkwood in the Primus Racing 5, also from Florida, already a winner this season, powered past the skirmish as well, taking over second, and the pair ran 1-2 for the rest of the 30-minute battle. Goffrey, with his 30 years of experience, taking home his first F4 U.S. championship victory. Oh, you know, those guys wanted to run two by two through the first four corners, and eventually it wasn't going to work. Somebody spun, all the cars got tangled to the outside. I had a clear run down the inside. And uh, I can't say I never looked back because I was watching in my mirrors quite a bit to see where I was. But I'll tell you, this Honda Power car worked great. I got to thank Crawford for building such a fantastic car, Pirelli tires. Primus Racing, John has just engineered this thing to the point where I could drive away from this thing a little bit today. I want to say that was for my parents. My dad's been in the hospital for about a month now and it's been a long month. So I'll see you, Dad. Kirkwood was a winner earlier at Mid-Ohio and he was happy to put two Primus cars on the New Jersey podium. In the beginning of the race, I didn't have that good of a start. I fell back actually one position going down into turn one. Almost made a pass going down into turn four. Then turn five, just a bunch of mayhem. One kid spun at the apex, and he went wide, and everyone took the, the high route, and I was already down on the inside, so I was already forced to the inside, and his car actually slid out back wide, so everyone else had to go into the grass, and it came out, me and my teammate won too, so I was extremely happy with that outcome. Third in this one went to young Raphael Forcier from Quebec, Canada, in his Group A Racing 62 car. Forcier put on a masterful drive from the back of the grid after a qualifying penalty to earn his podium position. Obviously, starting from the back, you, you can't go back anymore. Uh, so, I, I was a little luck helps. Obviously, there was a little incident in the, in the front. I could, I took advantage of that and finished third. Can't complain. The weekend's opener saw plenty of drama throughout the field. Best qualifier Cameron Das, the 16-year-old from Maryland, was involved in that early tangle. He had to restart at the rear. He was able to climb all the way to fifth at the checkers. He notched the race's fastest lap in the bargain, earning the pole for the weekend's second race on Sunday morning. The series young stars certainly aren't afraid to mix it up on track. Early on, there was contact involving the seven of Blake Mount from Colorado and series newcomer Quinlan Law from New Jersey. Later, Georgia's Skylar Robinson in the two and Baltazar Lequizamon from Argentina tangled. All were okay and able to make the start of race two on Sunday morning. So we'll see how the veteran Goffrey fares against these young guns when the next couple of events take place here this weekend at New Jersey Motorsports Park. Coming up next, we'll meet another newcomer who's joined the tour this weekend here in New Jersey, and we'll show you highlights of the weekend's second event in the F4 United States Championship. F4 U.S. Championship today is being brought to you by Honda. The F4 United States Championship is powered by Honda and presented by Honda Performance Development. And by SCCA Pro Racing. The F4 United States Championship is accessible, developmental, safe, and fun. For more information, visit F4USChampionship.com. Find out how you can get behind the wheel. Hi, I'm Steve Bamford. I'm 43 years old from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. My name is Davis Durrett. I'm 18 and from Cumberland, Indiana. The reason I came to the F4 series was to try and compete against the best of the best that are out there racing in SCCA Pro. Up and coming youngsters as well as aged veterans who have a ton of knowledge. The reason I came to F4 was because it was a perfect natural step from karting to cars. So, so far it's been a lot of fun and I hope to have a good rest of the year. Given that this is the first season of the new F4 US Championship, young drivers are joining the series each and every weekend. One youngster from Georgia joined the tour with a bang at Mid-Ohio a couple of weeks ago. Our Jeff Lepper caught up with Skylar Robinson. Skylar, you came out of the box strong with that first win at Mid-Ohio. Yeah, I mean, uh, debut weekend, you can't ask for much more than a win, so pretty happy with that performance. The team has really put a lot of faith in me uh, and, and having people who behind me who really helped me get there. Uh, it meant a lot to kind of, you know, reward them for that and giving me that opportunity. Um, honestly, we're not even in, really looking at the championship. I'm just kind of taking it one race at a time. I'm uh, really just focusing on the best that we can do, and I, you know, I think that's wins. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really pushing hard, and team's pushing hard to, you know, make sure it's challenging. You know, this, I, obviously F4 is a new series, so people are trying to, you know, get their name out there and grow the team and make a good impression. So um, that's kind of, you know, just how it worked out. And obviously it's attractive platform with, you know, sponsors like Pirelli and Honda, uh, you know, Crawford. So uh, I think it's, you know, I've really enjoyed my time here so far. 
As always on an F4 U.S. Championship weekend, three 30-minute races over two days. Here in New Jersey, one race on Saturday, a pair of races on Sunday. After Jim Goffrey schooled the kids in the weekend's opener, those young guns seeking some revenge in round number two. Sunday's Formula 4 U.S. Championship action taking place again under clear summer blue skies, and the on-track action for some was as hot as the weekend temperatures. It was a pretty cool and comfortable day, though, for young Cameron Doss from Maryland. Doss in the JDX Racing 28 car, the only driver to lap New Jersey Motorsports Park on Saturday in the minute 22nd bracket, and earned him the pole for Sunday's opener. Doss got a great launch from the FIA-mandated standing start and showed the field why he's a driver to watch, leading flag to flag during his second F4 U.S. Championship win of this inaugural season. I just I needed to stay consistent. Um, I tried to keep every lap in a in a three tenth window, just running 98 percent the whole time, and uh, just stay on track. Sunday was a day of redemption for the youngster from Poland by way of Florida, who dominated the series opening weekend in mid-Ohio. Conrad Chajic had struggled in the series' second visit to mid-Ohio. He had his challenges to open the New Jersey visit as well. But after lining up fourth for race two Sunday morning, Chajic was strong, making bold moves to finish second, his best run since his opening weekend trio of victories. Yeah, finally, it feels good to be back on the podium. Uh, Seeing as we only scored two points in the last round of Mid-Ohio, it feels good to have one solid race where I'm scoring more than five times that. So uh, it's definitely definitely the result that we were looking for. Skyler Robinson continues to impress. He started outside row one alongside Doss in this one. And while he couldn't hold on to second spot, he did earn the final podium position, coming home third. I mean, I just wanted to win, and we didn't win. So I guess we're not quite there. We need to keep working on the car, see if we can, you know, find a little bit more speed. Um, we're just not quite so what Cameron and Conrad were, but I think we did the best of what we had. Again, plenty of action behind the top couple of positions in this one. Blake Mount of the JDX Racing 7 car got into trouble and needed some help from the wrecker. Moises de la Vera from Guadalajara, Mexico in the 12 car had an off-track moment. He too was okay. But race two at New Jersey was all DOS, all day, A-OK, -okay, winning his second F4 U.S. Championship race of the season. As always, young drivers from all over the world taking a close look at the F4 United States Championship to further their motorsports careers. One newcomer coming to play this weekend at New Jersey, and he's a local driver. Let's meet Quinlan Law. It's a new experience. Um, just been racing in England this year, uh, gaining experience, and uh, really just ca came over here in between two races as a bit of a break, and the seat opened up, so we decided to step in and and fill the space. Uh, it's just a good learning experience. I think any car that I could get into and race would just yield more and more track time and just keep building on, on what I've learned already in England. And uh, yeah, the competition here is very stiff. Everyone's very quick. So um, it, it, it will be really good development. Uh, even though you know, away from my usual seat, it's, it's good to be here. This Crawford hot HPD chassis is, is a bit different than the Tatus Cosworth that we drive in Britain. But um, yeah, uh, any good driver will be able to adapt to what he's in very quickly and um, you know, uh, get the maximum out of his, his car that he's given. When we return on F4 United States Championship today, Honda and Honda Performance Development providing a wide range of support for this brand new series. We'll find out how things stack up from their viewpoint here in New Jersey. And highlights of race number three, would it be a veteran or one of the young guns going to victory lane? We'll be right back. F4 U.S. Championship today is being brought to you by SCCA Pro Racing. Bridging the gap from carts to cars has never been easier. Make the affordable transition with Formula 4. Find out more at F4USChampionship.com. And by Replay XD, professional action cameras, the leader since 2005. We are back in New Jersey, and you know, one of the keys to launching a major new championship like the F4 United States Championship is to have a terrific manufacturer as a series partner. F4 US has that with American Honda and Honda Performance Development. We talked earlier with a top-level HPD engineer about the development of the new F4 engine package. This engine is the Honda K20C1. It's the next evolution of the Honda K-Series engine, which has been a fan for racers across multiple genres. Uh, everything from sedans to uh, formula cars. So when this er version of the engine came out, we thought it was the perfect engine for us to move forward with for the next 10 years. Right now we're only running about 150 horsepower out of it, but it's capable up to over 300 horsepower stock and potentially modified up to over 400 horsepower. We're monitoring the health of the engines as well as their performance and then the ECU package as well, making sure that everything is operating properly. 
and it's a spec series, so everything should be very equal. And I think the results are showing that uh, with the top 10 cars being within less than a second of each other on the grid. All of this, of course, set the stage for the season's ninth round, race number three on the New Jersey Motorsports Park weekend. Let's see who would be at the top step of the podium. Cameron Das continued his New Jersey Motorsports Park dominance in the weekend's final 30-minute showdown, the second half of Sunday's doubleheader. Das, quick and consistent all weekend, started on pole again in race three. He would jump to the point once more from the standing start. This race saw the only moment all day when his dominance came into question. The 12th car with driver Moises De La Vera from Mexico passing Das early to take the lead. But De La Vera's advantage lasted just one turn. Das retaking the point on lap one and setting sail. The 16-year-old from Baltimore on cruise control, doubling up in victory lane Sunday at New Jersey, his third win of the inaugural F4 season. Uh, it feels great, you know, this is a completely different track. Uh, we had no idea what we were going to do coming into it, so it's good to know that we're, we're kicking more than one place. Conrad Chachik continued his comeback weekend after struggling in the season's second mid-Ohio visit. Chachik battled again with Skylar Robinson before settling the issue, taking home another second spot. I didn't have the best start, but quickly got myself back up to second, and it's pretty much where we ran for the entire race. I uh, didn't have the best restart, but uh, Cameron wasn't pulling away from us too much. I was running pretty consistent lap times. I'm pretty satisfied with the second place overall. I wasn't bad. I mean, especially after yesterday where we had some uh, big incident five and uh, we also had some wing damage and stuff. So uh, yesterday was pretty eventful. The last, second race today was also pretty crazy. So um, walked away at the podium. So I mean, that's not too bad. Again, lots of tight on track action in the season's ninth race. The 34 car of Texas's Austin Kazuba went around. And one of the year's wildest moments, Floridian Darren Keene in the JDX 25 car. And series newcomer Quinlan Lawl in the three from New Jersey, tangling going into turn one on lap eight. Keene got the worst of it going up and over. But these Crawford Composites built F4 race cars are safe and tough. Keene climbed out and he was just fine. Later in the half hour run, Kyle Kirkwood, who opened up the weekend with a second place finish in his Primus Racing Machine, started to battle with Skylar Robinson for third spot with five to go. But there was contact as well. Kirkwood had to retire. He gets credit for just a 15th place finish. Here's how the championship stands with six races to go. Das is the leader, Chachik right behind, Kirkwood, Goffrey, and Robinson still with a shot, but Das is the man to beat. You know, they say it's always sunny in South Jersey. At least that's certainly been the case here at New Jersey Motorsports Park this weekend. When we come back, though, we'll look at the flip side, the art of racing in the rain. F4 U.S. Championship today is being brought to you by Honda. The F4 United States Championship is powered by Honda and presented by Honda Performance Development. Welcome back to New Jersey and this edition of F4 U.S. Championship today. One of the great things about this new series is we have a terrific tire partner in Pirelli. They supply slicks like the teams are using here this weekend. Rain tires as well. No issue of rain here this weekend, but rain was definitely a factor a few weeks ago at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. There is definitely a skill level that you need to be effective driving in the rain. We talked to some of the series young guns and a couple of veteran aces about the art of racing in the rain. In all honesty, I was pretty happy. Uh, I, I had a pretty good bit of experience in racing in the rain in cars. I knew that a lot of these guys didn't. And uh, I think that was pretty evident. I did have a spin in the first race, but after that I ended up setting the fastest lap of the race, working my way up from almost dead last up to P4. These kids, especially in F4, they are just about to start the development as uh, racing drivers. You know, most of them race go-karts, and it's a lot about car setup and race craft, you know, and trying basically to give these kids the experience, you know, uh, that we had in the, in the past so they can apply on the racetrack, you know. So it's, it's a very detailed operation and you have to work very close to your team, to your engineers and make sure that you translate out there, that you're feeling in the car to the team and making sure you're developing the car all the time. I kind of feel like everything I learned in the rain was thrown out the door there. I'd been racing cars for 30 years and never spun on the pace lap until uh, mid-Ohio two weeks ago, so that was kind of a humbling experience for me but once I got used to the cars the first time we had driven in the wet so once I got used to it it was getting better lap times were coming down and we were able to get to the front just by not making any mistakes and ended up finishing third you know I've never experienced anything like it before so it was you know obviously I made a made a few mistakes that were the rookie but it was my first time in, in the wet in the car so uh, I think we can only only improve from there but yeah it was it was actually a lot of fun <laughs> it was actually my first ever on track in these kind of cars in the rain and wasn't necessarily what I expected. A uh, little bit tough, 
Um, well, we're going to be ready for the next time it rains, definitely. No, I didn't have any experience racing in the rain. That was my first time. Uh, I didn't do karting like a lot of other people did, so I, I had no requisite for what that was going to be. Um, but yeah, I just, I just kept cool and, and tried to just get my mind through it. Uh, of course, I, I spun in the keyhole, but that's okay. Uh, I got a lot of good experience out of that. Never in cars. I did a lot of racing in the rain with carts, so I had some familiar. I was familiar to the rain, but with the car and all the weight and the aero and whatnot, it's it's a uh, it was a big change. So I kind of had to get used to it for the first few laps, and it kind of came natural to me towards the end of the race. A lot of folks in the rain, you know, they'll get sort of locked into to this idea that this is where I want to put the car or that's where I want to put the car. And they came to understand that, that I've got to go and find the traction and whatever is involved in doing that, that's what I have to do. But number one, stay on the racetrack. Well, that's all the time we have for this edition of F4 US Championship today. It's been a terrific weekend of action here at New Jersey Motorsports Park. Next time we talk to you, we'll have our mid-season recap show. And then we'll have coverage of Road Atlanta and the season finale at Homestead Miami Speedway coming up later this fall. We'll crown our first ever series champion at Homestead. Thanks for watching. I'm Rick Benjamin. We'll talk to you next time.